Joining me now with their reaction is Democratic strategist Donna Brazil and former Trump administration official Sarah Isgur. This is the second time former President Trump has been indicted within the last three months. So, Donna, put this into perspective for us and your reaction. Well, first of all, we're in uncharted territory. Never before in the history of the United States has a former president uh, been indicted, not once, but now twice. And remember, this is about the president of the United States, uh, the former president, refusing to return documents after repeatedly being uh, asked to return them, uh, failure to comply with a subpoena. And we don't know all of the uh, information that's in the indictment, but the fact that we're a nation of laws and the former president decided for whatever reason that he did not feel it was necessary to return these documents, that is why we're in this uh, territory today. Sarah, looking at the legal battle ahead, what's going to happen on Tuesday when Trump has a court date and the Justice Department lays out the details of its case? Well, in some ways, it'll look very similar to what we saw in New York just a few months ago. But the big difference here, this will be a federal courthouse. It will be a federal prosecutor. Jack Smith has been around the block and then some when it comes to cases like this. Of course, he's never indicted a former president. But Jack Smith is a well-known prosecutor. He's a pit bull. He doesn't care what party you belong to, but he gets his guy. Uh, so I won't be surprised to see a speaking indictment from the Department of Justice, meaning we're going to get a real line-by-line -line layout of the department's case on Tuesday. Now, the RNC is asking all those running to support the nominee. So, Donna, you're a former party chair. If Donald Trump is under indictment or on trial, will the party still back him, you think? I think this is going to shake up the race, and many of the candidates will have to decide if the president uh, is convicted of these crimes, should they stand behind a, a convicted felon? Uh, for now, the president, the former president may be raising money and raising hell, but at the, at the end of the day, the Republican Party would like to win, and they're not going to be able to win with, with damaged goods. The Justice Department filed the indictment in Miami, a district known for extraditing its cases, a so-called rocket docket. So, Sarah, could the trial be happening in the middle of next year's primaries? It absolutely could. There's something called the Speedy Trial Act, and so Donald Trump can actually uh, invoke his Speedy Trial Act rights and make this move very quickly. On the other hand, Donald Trump can also have a large ability to delay this. And so while we could see a trial in early 2024, there's also a chance that this could go past the election. Donna, you're adept at giving out campaign strategy. How will Trump's opponents be able to use this on the trail this time around? Well, I think initially they're all going to come and, and rally behind him for obvious reasons, because he is still the front runner in the Republican Party. Uh, but I, eventually some of the candidates, and I'm sure someone that many of us know very well, Chris Christie, will take the first stab at it because, after all, he's a former prosecutor. But Asia Hutch Hutchison, the former governor of Arkansas, is going to speak out. But some of the candidates, perhaps even former Vice President Mike Pence, will be muted at this hour. But Donald Trump is going to try to re rally the entire Republican Party behind him, fundraise off of this, and try to build up his momentum and his lead within the, the race right now. So, Sarah, we've already heard from a number of Republican leaders, though some have remained silent. So there's a public face. Can, can you share with us what, with the, the sense of what's going behind the scenes in the Republican Party tonight? Absolutely. I mean, on the one hand, I think I'm hearing from a lot of Republicans uh, that they feel like this is bad for the country, that Donald Trump has been pursued since the moment he took office to now that he's left office, both at state and federal level, and that while they understand the facts may be different when it comes to Joe Biden or Sandy Berger or other Democrats who have retained classified information, that at the highest level, Donald Trump appears to be a, a target of Democrats, and that's their political opponent right now. On the other hand, you're hearing from a lot of Republicans wondering, yeah, but does it mean he can't win a general election? Please, thank you both. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.